Hey, what's up, everybody? Gonna do a reaction, man. This is a countdown reaction of the 20 uh, favorite bass rock and roll grooves of Rick Beato. Last week, I did a countdown of his top 20 favorite uh, guitar solos. And so today, I'm gonna be hitting up his top 20 favorite bass grooves of rock and roll. So yeah, looking forward to it, man. I've um, recently discovered uh, Rick Beato and his great YouTube channel. And uh, ever since I've been a fan of his, man. Uh, for that, I wanna give a shout out to Evelyn. I believe that Evelyn is the first person who mentioned Rick to me. Uh, so whenever I think of Rick Beato, I immediately think of her. Uh, I believe that she's the first person that mentioned, yo, check this guy out. And when I uh, checked out his channel, I was looking at two reactions. One was, uh, not reactions, but presentations. One was uh, a breakdown of what makes this song great. And it was um, A Whole lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. And then he went on to uh, break down and isolate and focus on the drumming styles of uh, John Bonham. And he was basically matching John Bonham up uh, versus and against uh, a drum machine. And you can tell um, how much more life and uh, uh, style and pizzazz and essence that John John's drumming had over that of a damn drum machine. So I was really impressed by the way that Rick could make you see things and hear things and the way he presented it. So, uh, yeah, this dude is really, really excellent. And so um, I'm glad that um, I've discovered this channel. So thank you for that, Evelyn. And also, I want to give a shout out and thanks very much to Bob Bannister. Bob, thank you again for this link, man. Uh, Bob had originally sent me uh, the link last week. And so, again, this link um, for the bass groove. So thank you uh, for that, Bob. Without further ado, man, let's hit this up. So what I'll do is we'll do the reaction. And then uh, let's go to Rick's um, wiki bio. And I'll read his bio. Get a little bit more acquainted with the man. So... So it says, the top rock-based intros of all time. Rick Beato. Let's get it. Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, it's the top 20 rock-based intros of all time. Now we've done videos on the acoustic guitar intros, the electric guitar intros, keyboards and drums. But on this one, I want to focus strictly on rock music. And I'll tell you why. Because... Some of the other videos, we had everything from Stevie Wonder to Tool. They were just all oh. over the place. And with the bass, there's so many different genres that we could talk about. I want to specifically focus on rock. Smart. Now, for the video, I brought in a couple of my friends that you've seen in other videos. Les Hall, who played in the top 20 greatest keyboard intros Cheers. of all time. And Marcus Petrushka, who played drums on my Origins of the Shuffle video that I just put out. The reason that I brought them in is the same reason I did on the drum intro video. is because it gives the intro context for how it fits together with the song. Okay, really quick for reference about what we're using to record the bass for this video. Right here is a 1968 SVT tube head. This is actually the first year that SVT was being made by Ampeg. And up here is a Dark Glass Alpha Omega 900. You've seen me use this in many videos. Really all the distorted tones are through this. All the cleaner, more vintage sounds are through this. The speaker cabinet we're using is an Ampeg 810 and I have two mics on the bass. I have an old AKG D30 and a Sennheiser 421 on the opposite speaker. Coming in at number 20 okay. is a song that was released in 2003 yeah, and it's shit, from a man. British three-piece band. Check it out. Song number 19 is off this band's debut record. In fact, it's the first song on the record and it features a special guest. Here it is. What a 
great song that is, man. Intro nice. number 18 is a high energy classic released in 1994 from this New York City trio. Coming in at number 17 is an intro from probably the biggest record of the 1990s. In fact, it created a new movement of music. This particular bass player, in my opinion, does not get nearly enough credit for how good of a bass player he is. Intro number 16 was released in 1991, and this bass player has one of the most unique sounds that you'll ever hear. Coming in at number 15 is an intro from a band whose lead singer once said, calling our music Southern Rock is like saying Rock Rock. Here it is. Oh man. Now we're talking. It's one of my first reactions on my classic rock channel. Coming in at number 14, and you guys are probably going to say, oh, this should be way lower than that, is from the Master of the Gallop. Check it out. Master of the Gallop. I like that. I'm going to remember that. Song number 13 is one of my favorite songs, and the bass part is the exact opposite of what the title is. is by a bass player that goes by one name. Well, that actually could be a couple different bass players, but you'll know who this is. Flea, isn't it? Coming in at number 11, this band needs no introduction. I've got two words for you. Lemmy. Song number 10 was one of the biggest hits this band ever had, and it was written by the bass player. Check it out. Of course, this would be on the list. Nice. Song number 9 was from Cameron Crowe's 1991 movie, Singles, about the Seattle grunge scene. As a matter of fact, this band is actually in the movie. Song number eight nice. is the title track of the 1986 release, Peace Sells But Who's Buying? Coming in at number seven is a song that's actually in seven. It's also from one of the most influential albums of all time. Track number six is the last song on side A of this band's first LP. You know, back in the old days, there used to be a side A and a side B. Check it out. Okay, now we're into the top five. Now, as I said in the other videos, the top five could pretty much be in any order, but this is my particular order. If you guys have your own order, put them in the comments section. I know that many of you will say, I wouldn't even put that song in the list at all. 
But this particular song is actually from a band whose singer is in another band that has a song on this top 20 list. Can you guess who it is? is a song that was released in 1991 off this band's first album and it's also played on a 12 string bass check it out Song number three oh, is from my favorite band. They always appear on these lists. There's nothing I can do about it because they were the greatest band of all time. And you all know this bass part. Props to Paul McCartney. He doesn't get enough credit for his bass player. Coming in at number two is a song that's really built around this bass part. It's from the band's 1975 release entitled Toys in the Attic. Before we get to number one, I'm going to do my list of honorable mentions like I always do. These are songs that could have made the list but didn't. The first one, in fact, probably should have been on the list, but I didn't put them on because they are blockers. Right. Here's my list of honorable mentions for the best rock bass intros of all time. for the top rock bass intro of all time. This is from a bass player that is no longer with us, but his legacy lives on. Here is my pick for the number one rock bass intro of all time. <laughs> That's all for now. Remember to leave your comments below if I forgot any songs or you want to put your own list down there. I love reading those. Remember to subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a first time watcher, remember to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. The Beato book 3.0 is now out. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. I put up all sorts of different content there that I don't have here. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching. All right.
Well, that was excellent, man. That was excellent. This guy has so much knowledge. And he basically, it's like from one end of the music spectrum to the other, he really, really knows his shit, you know? It's a pleasure just listening to him and just uh, learning from him. So, what you have to do, man, just like with the uh, his countdown of the 20 greatest guitar solos, everyone's list is going to be different. Give me your top five, top five bass uh, intros. Let's focus on just intros, right? If you go into the areas of bass um, uh, solos and stuff like that, it gets convoluted and lost. So let's focus on just rock intros. Give me your countdown of your top five favorite rock bass intros. That'll be really, really uh, interesting because everyone's list is going to be completely different. Let me uh, let me see your list. That'd be cool. All right. So let's do this, man. Let's do a quick read and a little bit of background on the man himself, Rick Beato, and uh, find out where he's from, how he got his inclination, uh, how he got his very astute knowledge of um, music and uh, his passion for it, obviously, and probably how he came about um, onto YouTube, you know, accessible to the world. So Rick Beato. Richard Beato, born April 24th, 1942. Uh, does that make you an Aries? Is an American musician, songwriter, audio engineer, record producer, and YouTube personality who lives in Georgia. He has written songs with and produced music for a variety of musical artists, including Need to Breathe, Parmalee, and Shinedown. Beato is a CEO and co-founder of Neural, an educated base company that produces an eponymous baby brain training app, education and career. Born into a large family from Rochester, New York, Beato studied at Ithaca College, where he attained a bachelor's degree in music. He earned a master's degree in jazz studies from the New England Conservatory of Music in 87. Before beginning his latest career as a YouTube personality, Beato's roles in academia and the music industry included those as session musician, university professor, songwriter, studio engineer, mixer, and record producer. He's also written textbooks on music theory and produced online lessons on the subject. Beato's work has been cited in several academic journals. He has lectured at several universities, including University of Alabama, Berkeley School of Music, and has testified before the U.S. Congress on matters related to intellectual property, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, and fair use. Studio Yada owns Black Dog Sound Studios in Atlanta, Georgia, and began recording bands there in 95. Yeah, man, he'll be like another... Uh, so what's the guy that started Muscle Shoals? Uh, Rick, uh, you know who I'm talking about. He also started the record label 10 Star Records, which he ran with business partner Johnny Diamond. Writing credits. Carolina, which he co-wrote with Parmalee in 2013, reached number one on Billboard's country airplay chart December 20th, 2013, and has achieved a million copies sold. Other contributions. Broken People by Muddy Maglio, uh, Magnolias was produced in part by Beato. Beato co produced the 2003 Fozzie album All That Remains and co wrote Enemy. Fozzie, isn't that uh, where Chris Jericho is a member? Isn't he the lead singer of Fozzie? Beato co produced the Need to Breathe albums The Heat in 2007, The Outsiders in 2009, and The Reckoning in 2011. Film soundtracks. Elizabeth Town in 2005, uh, producer, same in any language. Herbie Folly, loaded 2005, producer, more than a feeling. And Raisin Helen, 2004, as a writer, never be the same. YouTube career. Uh, YouTube career. 
Vieto began his YouTube career in 2015 after posting a video of his youngest son, Dylan, who is able to identify individual notes within complex chords after just one hearing. Wow. This video of his son's display of perfect pitch received 3 million views, causing Beato to decide to parlay his social media fame into a full-fledged YouTube channel. On August 27, 2019, Beato received the golden play button from YouTube when he achieved 1 million subscribers. As of June 2021, the YouTube channel has 2.3 million subscribers. 2.3 and 1. 2.3 million and one. Beato's channel is under his own name, although he introduces every video with the title Everything Music. One series in the channel is called What Makes This Song Great, in which Beato deconstructs and discusses the elements of popular songs. The videos in the series regularly get over 1 million views. In one video, Beato enlists the help of Bon, bon Jovi guitarist Phil X and virtuoso guitarist Eric Johnson to reinterpret the guitar, the guitar solo on Led Zeppelin's iconic Stairway to Heaven. Beato and, Phil, Beato and Phil X play the guitar solo in the styles of Peter Frampton and Eddie Van Halen respectively, while Johnson plays it in his own style. Keeps good company. Beato has been vocal about the issue of fair use. Several of his videos, including those about Radiohead and Fleetwood Mac, were taken down from the YouTube platform because of copyright claims. In July 2020, Beato testified be before a U.S. Senate committee on the judiciary on the subject of fair use. That is going to be an ongoing grind forever and ever. All right, y'all. That is Wikipedia profile of Rick Beato. Gives you a good idea of uh, where he came from, what his passions are, where he's been. Brother's been busy over the last 30 years. Um, and yeah, now now uh, a YouTube two, 2.3 million subscribers. That's fantastic, man. Congratulations on that feat alone, man. All right. So, y'all. Definitely down the road, I'll be looking at doing more uh, stuff from Rick Beato. Send me whatever recommendations you feel that I should uh, do, do reactions to, and I'll definitely make the time to do it, man. He's a, a great, great um, uh, music personality and somebody that you definitely want to listen to. All right, so uh, I'm just skipping down, checking out my notes, man. So coming up, uh, I got uh, reactions I got to get to for uh, Brian, Antoine, Ford, Maurice. Um, I'm going to finish my Led Zeppelin full album reactions. Well, maybe I'm not finished. Um, what I'm talking about is Physical Graffiti is the quote-unquote last Led Zeppelin full album reaction. But there is another album being Coda. I know some people feel that Coda isn't the same as the other albums, but let me know if you would like to see a full album reaction to Coda. I'll wait to hear from you. If not, then I won't bother. Uh, uh, I've got a Ginger Baker documentary, rockumentary, that I want to get to this week as well. And, um, and that's pretty much it. You know, just uh, going along those lines with the reactions, doing a few things outside of just reactions here and there, and uh, just keeping everything a little bit interesting and fresh for myself and also for you guys. So uh, let me know if there's any rockumentaries, documentaries that you uh, think that I should uh, check out. I'm also um, going to be doing a couple of uh, full... Um, uh, concert reactions in the next little while. I got to free up my time. It's always about time. I could plan to do something and then my time gets squashed a little bit and then I'll have to change plans. But uh, that's the intention anyway. So we'll see how it all rolls out for me. All right, y'all. That was an excellent, excellent uh, countdown. Um, what do you think of Rick's list? Do you like it? Do you think that there should have been uh, something else in the top five? Let me know about that. If you think something else should have been in the top five or would you have uh, switched something out? Just let me know what your top five list is. That'd be really interesting. And that's it, y'all. Have yourselves a good one. Take care. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.